begin for our final session before lunch. Let's have our theme song, please. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. The bridegroom has waited long for his bride to dress. He has suffered for a wrong, this we must confess. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. Give God praise, rejoice, be happy, church below and the church above. For his wife at last is ready, free from sinning by his love. All arrayed in glorious light, linen clean and white. All are clad in garments bright, glorious in His sight. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, Mary's feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. Blessed are they who are invited to the supper of the Lamb by the judgment vindicated saved by god's victorious plan christ is coming saints rejoice with the angels train hear the seventh trumpet's voice ever shall he reign Christ is coming, Christ is coming, marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. Be seated. Blessed Sabbath noon to all of you. This is our last day of camp, 2023. We've been studying. His wife hath made herself ready. The hour is late. And after a long delay, we believe this to be the generation of restoration. And I hope you follow me carefully in this short message which ties together some of the important points we've been looking at this week. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the privilege of worship on your holy Sabbath day and of studying your word. We pray in the name of Jesus and we come by faith in the name of Jesus and in the merits of Jesus into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. We ask for the anointing of your spirit, for your forgiveness, for your full and free salvation, and give us faith to believe, repent, surrender, to receive your righteousness, and therefore to walk in obedience to your commandments and to your word. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.
We are starting with a text there in Luke 21, 34 to, th 34 to 36. You can all see the text. You can find it in your Bible as well. Jesus says, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unawares. Take heed to yourselves. Now these are days, throughout human history, people have not been uh, taking heed to themselves. You remember in uh, the Bible that Jesus said to Peter what kind of death he would die. And while Jesus was talking to Peter, Peter was looking at John and asking Jesus, what about John? And Jesus told him to mind his own business. You know that text? Don't worry to ask me about John. You follow me. So Jesus is telling Peter that he was going to die a crucifixion. And Peter was asking Jesus, what about John? Jesus says, if I will, that he should tarry till I come. What is that to do with you? Follow me. And the church members started a rumor saying that Jesus said that John would live to the second coming. And Jesus did not say that. He said, if. So church members, all of us, the same all down through history. That is why this text says to Peter and to John and to me and to you, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness. So right now, and throughout this camp meeting we've been studying, some people have taken heed to themselves to be present or to listen or to follow, to read and to study. Others have been present and still absent, and others have been absent squared. Jesus says, take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. We human beings like to drift and talk. Jesus said that John the Baptist came and lived a simple life, preaching repentance, and the church members said he had a demon, the Pharisees. And Jesus said he came and went and mixed with the publicans and Pharisees, and they said that he was a drunkard. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, cares of this life, and so that day come upon you on the words. We continue. Verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Now the Greek word translated snare here is a Greek word, P-A-G-I-S, to use the English translation, Pegasus. It is really pi alpha gamma is, has an alpha and a gamma. Interesting. Snare. You know what a snare is? A snare is a trap that is cleverly deceptive. And you don't know that you're walking into it until you are caught. Some translations translate it a rat trap. A snare, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Now, as seven Adventists, we uh, know from Bible prophecy a few things. Let me uh, remind you of them. Uh, we are told, for example, that a storm, the prophet Daniel says, a time of trouble shall come. A storm is arising that will wrench and test the spiritual foundation of every one to the utmost. Testimonies, volume 5, 1, 2, 9. You heard that? A storm is arising that will wrench and test the spiritual foundation of every one to the utmost. A storm is coming relentless in its fury. Are we prepared to meet it? A storm, that is our Testimonies, volume 8, 3, 1, 5. A storm is coming, the storm that will try every man's faith of what sort it is. Believers must now be firmly rooted in Christ, 
or else they will be led astray by some phase of error. Let your faith be substantiated by the word of God. Grasp firmly the living testimony of truth. Have faith in Christ as a personal savior. Now, when we have faith in Christ as a personal savior, and we abide in Christ, we are born again, we are growing spiritually, the fruit is obedience. And the final crisis will be whether we will obey God and keep his commandments because we have the faith of Jesus and the free gift of righteousness, or whether we will follow the world and disobey God. The crisis is coming. And this one as well. This is uh, Testimonies, Volume 4, 251. If the believers in the truth are not sustained by their faith, in these comparatively peaceful days, what will uphold them when the grand test comes and the decree goes forth against all who will not worship the image of the beast and receive his mark? Because we've been saying that a crisis has been coming for a long time, because there's been a long delay, we tend to grow careless. Some Adventists don't even believe anymore that the Sunday law is going to be passed. They don't believe a crisis is going to come. They believe that Jesus can come without a final crisis. And the longer we delay, and it is not God delaying, it is we delaying, the worse things will become, and the greater the casualty rate. So that is why Jesus says, we are to take heed of ourselves. Because as a sneer, will it come upon all them that dwell on the earth. And this other one here as well. This other one. The time of trouble such as never was is soon to open upon us. And we shall need an experience which we do not now possess. And this one now. And which many are too indolent to obtain. Many are too indolent to obtain indolence. The Lord sends messages and light year after year, year after year, and his people are indolent, don't know the truth, can't rightly divide the word of God, drift along, paying attention to everything else except what Jesus says. Take heed to yourselves. Imagine Jesus was telling Peter, you are going to be dying a crucifixion death, Peter barely heard what Jesus was saying. I looked at John and said, what about him? Jesus says, if I wish that he were to live until I come, what is that to do with you? Follow me. And the church, which is quick to talk, set up a rumor that Jesus said that John would live to the second coming of Christ. You think the church easy? You think we easy as church members? Well, well, well. One day, two people came to Jesus saying they had a quarrel over land. Jesus said they came to preach the gospel of the kingdom. I have nothing to do with your quibble over land. Both of you need to be born again. Selfishness. So Jesus followed a fairly straight line, whereas we like to wobble about in all sorts of talk and justify our talk. And Jesus' straight line is, get ready, a crisis is coming. Will you be obedient to the law of God or be disobedient by abiding in me? As a sneer shall it come on all them that dwell on the earth. By the way, uh, I'm going to share a part of this sneer in a minute because we face it now. Brother Newton mentioned it this morning. I talked a little bit about it yesterday. But here in Testimonies, Volume 5, we have a very important warning. warning uh, page 707. Listen to it again. Uh, I mentioned it during the week. 707. Uh, listen to this. Listen to this. Testimonies, Volume 5, 706, 707. Peter exhorts his brethren to grow in grace. Are we growing in grace? And in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are we growing? Whenever the people of God are growing in grace, they will be constantly obtaining a clearer understanding of his word they will discern new light and beauty in its sacred truths. 
If no new light is coming, she says, you can be sure God's people are not growing in grace. This has been the true history of the church in all ages. And thus it will continue to the end. As we grow, everything will become clearer and new light will come. Very important. Now, this one. I have been shown that many who profess to have a knowledge of the present truth. Listen to the warning. I take these warnings personally and seriously. I don't look at a soul else, so I'm applying this to myself. I have been shown that many who profess to have a knowledge of present truth know not what they believe. Well, we are told that when the crisis breaks, the larger proportion of those who now profess to be Adventists will join the ranks of the mark of the beast. Don't have a clue what they believe. Say amen to X. And then say amen to Y, and Y is the opposite of X. Don't have a clue. And the spirit of prophecy is serious. They do not understand the evidences for their faith. They have no just appreciation of the work for this time. And Jesus says this is a snare, a rat trap. A snare. The rat is focused on the piece of cheese. It does not see the surrounding apparatus and walk straight in. When it realizes it's a trap, it cannot realize it because it is dead. When the time of trial shall come, there are men now preaching to others who will find upon examining the positions they hold that there are many things for which they can give no satisfactory reason. Leave that there for now. I have another quotation there to read right now. Listen to this trap that the Protestant world has found itself in. To get away from the law of God, popular Christianity says that the law of God is abolished. That the new covenant says there is no law to obey. Okay. That's error number one. That's a trap. Trap number two, Sin is by nature. So listen to this trap. A homosexual presents himself and says, I am so by nature, plus also the law of God is abolished. So why are you bothering me? Tell me how the churches are going to answer that man. Tell me. They preach the law of God is abolished to get away from the Sabbath. So they abolish the whole law to get away from the Sabbath. And then they also say, we really can't stop from sinning because sin is nature. So homosexual come and say, I'm so by nature, plus the law of God is abolished. You must give me free access to the church. They can't get away from it because they are in error, abolishing the law of God, and then saying that sin is not an act of the will. Listen to this very carefully. Very, very carefully. Testimonies, volume 5, 513. Listen carefully. Pure religion has to do with the will. The will is the governing power in the nature of man, bringing all the other faculties under its sway. The will is not the taste or the inclination. It is the deciding power which works in men unto obedience to God or unto disobedience. You see, your hormones or your liver or your big toe can't make you do anything without your will. Your will must consent and decide. So Satan already has the trap laid for the Christian world. And many Adventists who should know better are wrapped up in the trap. And this is serious business. Serious business. So we go now to we go now to uh, before we go to uh, Luke, let's go to Ephesians 4 a minute. Ephesians 4. I hope my technical men have the right text here for me. It doesn't look so. Oh, yes. Okay, the different translation. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 4. And I'm looking here at... Uh, Verse 11. Ephesians 4 from verse 11. 
Okay. Listen to God's preparation for us so that we are not caught in the snare. Okay, not caught in the snare. It was he who gave gifts to people. He appointed some to be apostles, others to be prophets, others to be evangelists, others to be pastors and teachers. Be ready for whatever comes, dressed for action and with your lamps lit. Like, sorry, this is... Uh, I'm trying to get the Ephesians. Uh... All right. Uh... Then we shall no longer be children carried by the waves and blown about by every shifting wind of the teaching of deceitful people who lead others into error by the tricks they invent. Instead, by speaking the truth in a spirit of love, we must grow up in every way to Christ, who is the head. So the Apostle Paul tells us that we are to reach the measure of the stature of men and women in Christ. That is Ephesians 4, 11 to 15. We are to reach the measure of the stature of men and women in Christ. So we are to grow in grace. And as we grow in grace, the righteousness, the very life of Christ, not only covers us, but fills us, producing obedience to the commandments of God, the law of love, which is written in our hearts in the new covenant. Now, right now, in case you don't know, uh, you, I mentioned it before you heard, but the new time mentioned it. Every doctrine of true Adventism, I said true Adventism. And the reason I said true is because there's other than true. The every doctrine of true Southern Adventism is being attacked right now by false Protestantism and also being attacked from inside the so-called Adventist world. And so God wants us to reach the point where we are not blown about by every wind of doctrine, not blown about by every wind of doctrine. And now we go to... Luke 12. I don't know what translation the honorable brethren have put up, but open your Bibles with me to uh, Luke 12. King James Version. You may be more accustomed to that. King James Version, Luke 12. Luke chapter 12. We have it in a chapter in our uh, camp book. Luke 12. And we're going to go to verse 35. And we can read the King James Version, and we can compare this version. Uh, I don't know what version this is. Uh, what version this is, uh, Brother Shamal? You can tell me. Uh, verse 35. King James Version says, Let your loins be girded about, and your lights be burning. This version says, Be ready for whatever comes, dress for action. And with your lamps lit. Good translation. Just want to know where it is. Verse, six, verse 36. Like servants, or uh, King James Version says, And ye yourselves, like men that, are, that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and shall make them sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And verse, verse 38, And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. Now this brings us to a, a very important point. This is a new first generation. We call it generation five. We call it a new first generation. 
1844 to 2004 meant a four-generation delay which we've imposed on the Lord by lukewarmness, rejecting the 1888 message, rejecting the character of God message, drifting along, drifting along, and not taking heed to ourselves. So that the position of the Adventist world is such that when the crisis breaks, the vast proportion of Seventh Adventists will abandon the third angel's message and join the image and mark of the beast. Because right now, they are loyal to buildings and offices and do not know the truth. You hear what I said? Loyal to conferences, buildings, and offices, but do not know the third angel's message. How about us? How about me? Do we know the third angel's message? The sanctuary truth is under attack. The investigative judgment is under attack. Righteousness by faith is under attack from within and without. That a final generation will be perfected in character that is under attack from within and without. That Christ took our sinful fallen flesh and overcame and his victory is ours so that we can obey as he obeyed, that is under attack. The spread of prophecy is under attack. Every detail of our doctrinal system is under attack. And if we don't know and if we just drift along, we don't know what the snare is, it will catch us and we will be destroyed. Camp meetings are occasions when we come together, study intensely, pray for the Holy Spirit, and to continue to consolidate for the rest of the year as God sends special emphases, people don't pay that much mind. But Jesus is making an important point here, which I want to spend a few minutes on, and it is this. Four watches in a generation, four decades. You will remember in generation 1, 1844 to 1884, lukewarmness held the people of God in a trap. God sent the true gospel, righteousness by faith, and it was rejected. Uh, listen to another trap. A chap told me it wasn't really rejected. It wasn't accepted. That meant that the second generation passed. We entered a third in which there were compromises on the gospel. The book, Seven Adventists Answer Questions on Doctrine and the Barn House Apostasy. And four generations went by until we reached 2004, then started this new generation, 2004. The, the time frame of this generation is 2004 plus 40 to 2044. We believe that this is, according to the book of Joel, the generation of restoration, so long as God's people intend to surrender all, receive his righteousness, and have his law written in their hearts to be obedient to his commandments as the part of the parcel of that wonderful salvation given to us. So obedience or disobedience will be the final test. And it will come in such a way that the authorities will be enforcing Sunday sacredness, giving the world the idea that they're saving the world, whether it be from climate change or all the various disasters. And the people of God who stand for the true Sabbath and his law will be looked upon as mad. Absolutely mad. The Apostle Paul before King Agrippa almost thou persuadest me but I think much learning Paul hath made thee mad. And God wants us to understand that uh, understanding his love, for God loves us unconditionally. He forgives us. 
He wants us to abide in Christ. He wants us to be ready because the world is rushing on to its end. We live in a world now that is absolutely berserk. When a woman can give birth to a child, the baby is already born, and she's asked by a grandmother who is old timeish, and by the way, is it a boy or a girl? The woman says she has to decide. Upside down madness in this world getting worse and worse. People taken up with every kind of what they call pleasure, but no time for reality and for truth as it is in God. So as a trap, as a snare, it will come upon all them that dwell upon the earth. Now getting back to these watches, Jesus mentions two watches here. He says if he should come in the second or third watch. Which means that when the people of God mean business and see this as a generation of restoration, and don't forget, we have to mean business, we have to submit, we have to be serious because we are told in the spirit of prophecy, God has put it in our power to bring this scene of misery to an end. Another Adventist idea going around that is not true it's not part of the true Adventism, is that whenever God is ready, he will come. He doesn't depend on anybody. That's false doctrine. He has to wait until the harvest is ripe. And we are the ones to cooperate to ripen in grace. And we believe that the true Seventh-day Adventism is the true Christianity and it will triumph. And God must have a people settled therein. All right, so we have one more year after October, in this second watch. So October 22nd, 2023, to October 22nd, 2024, is the last year in this watch, in this new first generation. And when that comes, October 22nd, 2024, that is called in Bible prophecy a midnight point. It was a midnight point when, when Gideon conquered that famous victory, had that famous victory. By the way, uh, Gideon, on the way to that midnight shift, how many, how many men did Gideon start with? 32,000. Anybody seeing 32,000 would say this is wonderful church growth. 32,000? Fantastic. God said, uh, test number one, let's see their commitment. Those who don't mean business, straight question, leave. How many left? How many of the 32,000 left? 22. So before the 22,000 left, judging by our methods, we would have said that at that point, Gideon had a fantastic church growth. 32,000 people, wow. Wow. A mega church. After God said, those who uh, are not serious, go back home. He was left with how many now? Ten. God said, okay, they, 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 that's not good enough. Take them down to the water and let them drink. And those who drank ready to move, compared with those who took their time and relaxed, God said, okay. How many men were left that were ready? Three hundred. Three, God's decisive number. When the crisis approaches, the large proportion of us who've been pretending to know the truth will abandon the faith and join the ranks of the enemy. That should make us examine ourselves. Not like Peter asked, Jesus was happening with John, examine ourselves. Take heed to yourselves. So, as we approach the final crisis, there will be unity and separation. Those who are truly in Christ and who seek for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace or the bond of peace in the unity of the Spirit will come together in the truth, in the love of God, in the Spirit of God. And others will depart. And what happens there may surprise us. 
That is why we are to look to Jesus and not to man. That is why we are to study the word for ourselves and not for another. That is why the Bible tells us to take heed of yourselves. Satan has so many techniques to destroy us. Second and third watch. So ahead of us is a third watch. And if we know from the history of the church, a second and third watch is a time when the people of God can accelerate in spiritual growth to be harvest ready, or God forbid, fail God again. Now watch it. Failing God again means continuing this delay. As I said last night, when I was a boy, that was a long time ago, and we had two murders in Barbados, my mother would call us to pray and say, Lord, have mercy on us. Two murders, we going downhill. If she were to be resurrected now to hear things in Trinidad and, uh, and so on, wow. But as Brother Newton said this morning, those were transgressions, terribly sinful, but still in the realm of reality. Now sin has gone out of reality into areas of pure abomination. And things will get worse and worse. And as things get worse and worse, it is harder for God to have a people who are focused. I see everybody's uh, troubled now with the fact of, of the gender issue and so on, and it should be. But I say years ago, years ago, it was introduced into universities and secondary schools, something called the theory of evolution. I was in sixth form. Maybe we were asked to do that theory and asked to write the evidences for it. My teacher was very uh, displeased with me. I told her the evidences for the theory of evolution do not exist. She said she would give me not. I said, oh, I said well, whether you give me not or not, the, the evidences for the theory don't exist. If I write what the textbook says, you give me 100%, you're just given 100% for lies. They don't exist. But that was a foundation being laid there then that people didn't see where it would go. Because if there is no God, there are no absolute standards. And if there are no absolute standards, why are people worrying now when a rat claims it could be a cat? But there is a God. There are absolute standards. And the law of God is absolute. And God will have a people who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So as we approach the end of this second watch on a midnight point. Now, you know, just give, give an example here. Uh, a lot of bad things have happened in the world. You, you had the uh, World War I and World War II and the Spanish flu and so on. But they were fairly far removed from us, except older people like me. I was born three years after World War II stopped. Uh, that's a long time ago. But we have people now that are far removed from those things. So things were going along smoothly, 2017, 2018, 2019. Then bam, we had a pandemic. And everything went into a wobble to show how fast things can move when there is a crisis. In the crisis coming, things will be much more terrible than we can imagine. Much more terrible. So I close by saying this. I close by saying this. In this camp meeting, God has sent us some consolidation, some advancing light, some clarity. We have a lot of young people here, and God, God, God depends on young people. Daniel was 17 years old when he went into the University of Babylon. And uh, when he graduated, and the king was the chief examiner, he could answer not only all the questions the king asked him, but he knew more than the king. And God 
wants our young people especially to be diligent in their commitment and study of the word of God. Whatever age you are at, you can be diligent in the study of the word of God, surrender to God in repentance, the new birth, and be part of the number who will keep the commandments of God because they have the faith of Jesus. Because the test, nobody will come and ask you if you have faith. Satan will set up a test. Faith is tested by obedience. Faith works. If you have genuine faith, it will obey the commandments of God. And as we approach the end of this watch, and a third watch is ahead of us, we have to pray more, study more, consolidate more, and we, be ha we have to become zealous. Jesus says in the Laodicean message, be zealous therefore and repent. We have to become genuinely zealous and excited about the truth. Everybody will call us mad. Everybody will say that will not happen because everybody is headed for the snare, the rat trap. We must know and believe it will happen and proclaim it. And therefore, we have to be diligent. So Jesus says back here in uh, verse 38 as we wrap up, if you shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. So this is a second watch coming to its close. Ahead of us is a third watch, a 10-year period, 2024 to 2034. This has nothing to do with time setting or date setting. It has to do with the opportunities brought to view in the word of God when God's people can know that all heaven is interested in their salvation and be committed to getting ready, to getting right. May the Lord have mercy upon us. We have a couple more chapters for, to finish off in our camp meeting this afternoon. I think the Lord, the light the Lord has sent us is for a special reason. Ahead of us, we do not know what will happen. But we know, when I say we do not know what will happen, we know what is going to occur, the image and mark of the beast, but we do not know how suddenly or catastrophically other things will trigger these effects. So I close with 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6, 5. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life. Although eternal life is a gift, we have to take hold of it. God has sent his son who's paid the redemption price for all men, paid, satisfied divine justice for all men, suffered the wrath for all of our sins, and God has given us eternal life. We are told this life it is, is, is in his son. He who has the life. So we have to take hold of eternal life. We have to have the son and abide in the son. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you were made, when you made the good confession before many witnesses. Now God has been very good to us. The mere, the mere fact that we are alive right now, God has been very good to us. People are shot. People get into accidents. That girl that was walking, somebody hit her, 19 years old and gone. The, the, the person who did it has never come forward. I told you about those students in 1979 in New Zealand going down to do a survey and the plane went down, wrong information put into the computer. That you are alive right now is a testimony to God's love. That you are alive right now is a testimony that every loaf of bread comes to us stamped with the cross of Christ. Hallelujah. And when we appreciate God's love, and you know God's love is amazing. God did not give up on Adam when he sinned. His son covenanted to come and be our substitute and surety. And God in Christ reconciled the world to himself. And we as individuals now believe in the good news must repent and surrender and lay hold. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. Have that righteousness in our beings to make us obedient. To prove Satan wrong when he said that God cannot have a final church completely obedient to his will. The whole world will be against us. We will be treated with what is called universal execration. So we have to stand alone in Christ with his righteousness and for his righteousness. 
So may we not make this camp meeting uh, a loss. Let us make it again as we surrender and commit ourselves completely. By, we come to, by, by the time we come to the close this afternoon, may we be completely surrendered and determined that as we face a third watch, and you should hear the plans in the world for the decade ahead. Uh, the scientists are already telling us that things are changing so rapidly, they are very afraid. The temperatures are going up exponentially. And the crisis ahead of us is going to be more amazingly devastating than any of us could have ever imagined. May we appreciate God's love. May we appreciate the sacrifice he made to save us. May we fight the good fight of faith. May we lay hold of eternal life. May we study all the light he's sending us. May we pray for each other. May we never lose hope. Feelings of despair may come into our soul. Even if we get sick or anything else happens, God still loves us. If we die, we have the assurance of resurrection, number one. If we live, we have the assurance of going through the final crisis to be translated, whether we live or die, so long as we do it in Christ, we are secure. But God is looking at that remnant who will go through the final crisis to keep the commandments of God because they have the faith, they have the faith of Jesus Christ. May God keep us and our focus on Christ. We're going to sing our closing hymn. It should be our theme song again before our closing prayer. Uh, after our luncheon break, of course, we come back for the afternoon's prayer session and then our final group study as we look to finish off the last two or three chapters of our book before our summary and our closing ceremony for this camp, 2023. May God bless you all real good. Christ is coming. Christ is coming. Marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming. Christ is coming. Let the midnight cry be heard. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. The bridegroom has waited long for his bride to dress. He has suffered for our wrong, this we must confess. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, marriage feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. Give God praise, rejoice, be happy, church below and the church above. For his wife at last is ready, free from sinning by his love. All are red in glorious light, linen clean and white. All are clad in garments bright, glorious in His sight. 
Christ is coming, Christ is coming, Mary's feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. Blessed are they who are invited to the supper of the Lamb by the judgment vindicated, saved by God's victorious plan. Christ is coming, saints rejoice with the angels train. Hear the seventh trumpet's voice, ever he shall reign. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, Mary's feast is all prepared. Christ is coming, Christ is coming, let the midnight cry be heard. Praise the Lord, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus as we approach the end of this 2023 camp meeting here. And we thank you for all that you've done for us, the outpouring of your spirit in advancing and consolidating in truth. We pray that we will continue to study and pray and submit and to know that terrible times are ahead and that as a sneer, it will come upon all them that dwell upon the earth. But if we take heed to ourselves and abide in Christ and grow in the knowledge of the Son of God and in grace, we shall be ready for what happens. Hallelujah. Bless every young person, every middle-aged person, every older person, even the baby in arms. We pray that your spirit will guide and direct and convince and convict us to surrender all, to be committed, and with the intention to set our willpower to go in grace, to be obedient to your word, having the righteousness of Christ. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Bless us now in the luncheon break. Bring us back for the afternoon sessions of finishing off our camp book and then our closing ceremony. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Just a quick word here. Of course, we welcome everybody and we're glad to have everybody, but... I'm just going to mention here to two of our young people who are medical students. One just uh, graduated and did very well. Uh, I've been praying for her all the time, and we thank God for how well she did. And we pray that God will continue to guide her and keep her, and above all, keep her in Christ. The other student had an accident. I will be doing finals in January, and I hope that we pray too for her success. And we thank God for bringing her through her illness, and healing her. God bless Jada and Brittany. God bless you both. God bless to everyone.